Welcome back, boys and girls. This series of videos is um, on numbers and operations, and we're going to be studying fractions. And by the end of this series of videos, you will have developed an understanding of fractions as numbers. So by the end, you should be able to explain how fractions are not, how fractions are numbers, and um, how they work. So getting started with our first lesson, our first objective. Now these objectives are written in grown-up math words and I'm going to go over them with you and um, explain the words to you so that you'll understand what it is that we're doing. So in this lesson you will understand a fraction is 1 over something, over blank, as the quantity formed by one part when a whole number is partitioned into blank equal parts. So first of all, let's go through those numbers. Now there's some numbers that we know already, but these are math vocabulary words. So I just want to highlight them for you. This one is fraction. This one is whole number. And here is equal parts. Now as I talk about these words through the lesson, I will point them out to you and so that it will remind you what those words mean. Now there are some words in here that may be um, kind of new to you, that you may not know exactly what they mean, or you may not know how they're used in math. So the first word that I want to look at is quantity. The second one is formed. And the third one is partitioned. Okay, now quantity is basically just a number. So I'm going to write number above quantity. Formed just means made. And partitioned means divided. And you'll see how that works as we go through the lesson. The other thing that I need to point out to you is the action word, the verb in the subjective, what it is you have to do. And here the action word is understand. Now, just understanding, that's not something you can show me, so you will actually um, have to demonstrate your understanding for me in class. But for right now, you're just going to understand that a fraction, 1 over blank, as the number made by one part when a whole number is divided into equal parts. That's basically all that objective means. Okay, so let's talk, first of all, about whole numbers. You know your whole numbers, you just may not already call them that. The whole numbers are the numbers that you learned to count in kindergarten, or when you counted your fingers and toes with your mommy when you were little, or you counted your blocks or your Cheerios, and we start with zero. Now, there are other numbers here, but we're not gonna worry about those in third grade. So we're gonna start with zero. So we have zero, we have one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten, and it goes on and on and on to infinity. So, but we're going to just look at these numbers just for this moment. Okay, so now in between zero and one, there are other numbers. Between one and two, there are other numbers. Between two and three, between three and four, between 4 and 5, between 5 and 6, between 6 and 7, between 7 and 8, between 8 and 9, between 9 and 10, and in between all the numbers that follow. And these numbers that are in between are all referred to as the same thing. They are called fractions. Ooh, I'm getting quite a wiggly mess going on here. <laughs> These are all called fractions. Okay, so we have our whole numbers. Those are the numbers you learn to count your Cheerios with. And then in between each of those numbers, you have fractions. So we've talked about whole numbers and fractions. In just a moment, we're going to talk about equal parts. Okay, so let's talk about some fractions. I'm going to draw a rectangle. And this rectangle equal, um, represents one. This is one rectangle. 
Now I can break this rectangle down, I can divide it or I can partition it into equal parts. So I'm going to divide it into two equal parts. Now if I want to make two equal parts, ignore the pen, two equal parts, I need to just take one finger away and that tells me how many vertical lines I'm going to draw. So I need two parts, so I'm going to draw one vertical line. I want it to be equal, so it's going to be in the middle. Think of it like dividing a pizza or a sandwich, or I know, even better, a candy bar. This is my candy bar, and I'm going to share it with you. But in order for it to be fair, I need to put it in equal parts. So I'm going to eyeball it and get it as close as I can in two equal parts. Okay? So I can also take my candy bar and I can divide it into three equal parts. I can share with you and another friend. So if I'm going to make three equal parts, that means I'm going to draw two vertical lines. Okay? Same thing with four equal parts. If I want four equal parts, I'm going to draw three vertical lines. And five equal parts, I will draw four vertical lines. So here's my candy bar. Those aren't very equal. I wouldn't share that candy bar with you because the parts aren't very equal, but it's close enough. Okay, so now I want to show you how this relates to a fraction written as 1 over blank. Okay, so I'm going to color in one part of my candy bar. This is going to be a purple candy bar. Maybe it's a um, Jolly Rancher. Although those are hard to cut in half. Okay, so I'm going to color in one part. So I made this into two equal parts. So my equal parts are on the bottom and I colored in one. So one out of two parts are colored in. And see that's just like up here. One out of blank, so I can put something different in the box. The equal parts are what goes in the box. Okay, I can do the same thing with this fraction. This has one, two, three equal parts. That's my blank at the bottom, and I colored in one. So for this one, I have one, two, three, four equal parts. And I'm going to color in one. So that is one out of four equal parts. Okay, and then this one has one, two, three, four, five equal parts. We're going to pretend they're equal. It's more my art than problem with my art than it is with my math. Um, so I have five equal parts. I'm going to color in one. And that's one out of five. Now there are different um, ways that you can refer to your fractions. There's the grown-up math way, which is the way that you will eventually talk about them all the time. But in third grade when we're first starting out, we call our fractions by the top number out of the bottom number because that helps us understand what fractions mean. Later on you'll learn the proper names for them. So I'm going to write what each of these means and I'm going to put it in quotation marks so that you know that that is what you're supposed to say. So we have one out of two. One out of two equal parts is colored in. So we say one out of two. We have three equal parts. One of them is colored, so one out of three. Mm. 
And then we have four equal parts. One is colored, so that's one out of four. That buzzing noise you're hearing is my phone, but I'm going to ignore it until this lesson is over, so you can ignore it too. One, two, three, four, five equal parts. One is colored in, so we say one out of five. And now we understand that a fraction is one out of blank as the number made by one part when a whole number is divided into blank equal parts. I divided each of these whole candy bars into equal parts. I divided them into equal parts. Each one is different, so that's why this is a blank. And I colored in one of each. So that is... Um, that is what a fraction is.